3rd of January 2024 will be the day when the first release of Home Assistant for 2024 will be released. Today we'll be looking at the 5 main things, in my opinion, in this release. We'll start in a couple of seconds. As always, let's start with a bit of warning. This video was recorded on the beta release of Home Assistant, Beta 2. While at the time of the recording Beta 3 was out, I still didn't update to Beta 3 because there is something I need to show you that's new in this release that is related to the updates. So let's get started with today's video. First things first, let's look at the, yes, completely new UI for automations. If you want to create a new automation and select a new automation, empty automation, you will be presented with a new screen. In my opinion, this is more readable, understandable than the previous automation editor. But of course, there will be a lot of you that will not like the changes. But if you think about it, we have when and if something happens, then do something that you want to do which is similar to add trigger, add condition and add action, but now it's more readable also to the new users what each of the blocks should do. Also, we got a lot of helpers or explanations or descriptions, which are not visible all the time. For example, when we add a trigger, other, home assistant shut down, you see that the description of what, when is, has been replaced with the trigger that we have set up. Then you have option of adding condition or a building block, and building block is something new. Actually, it's not new, it's just a new way of presenting something that we already had. For example, we can either add condition, device is set to heat, which is one way of creating a condition, or we can do building blocks, use and, not or or, and then add condition 1, device is set to heat, and device, some other device is set also to heat. This, in my opinion, is a great change. It simplifies on how you use automations and it makes it easier to read but also create both actions and conditions. And once again, when you do populate this section and if, you see that the description or the tutorial on how to use that section is gone. If I would to delete both of those lines, we get our short description here. In the last part, we have to define what to do, then do or add action. Same again, you can add action directly. There is a list of actions that you can use, or you can also browse through other lists where other actions are available. Or, once again, you can add a building block and start building more complex action list. It will take some time for the old users to adapt to the new automation editor, but in my opinion, this one works better, has more meaning and it's easier to use. Next one is related to the to-do list. In the 2023.11 and 2023.12 versions of Home Assistant, we had updates to the to-do lists. But one thing was missing and that is the UI for the to-do lists. Actually there was, but the editor was missing some things. For example, I have here to-do list that has additional information. Get haircut, with the description look lovely, and due date in 4 days. Check if you are subscribed, this is due in 6 hours, become super villain, no description which already is expired or it has reached its to-do time frame, and then rule the world in 3 months. If we click on it, you get the new UI. You have a task name, description, due date, due time, you can save or delete the item. While everything was already prepared for this in the previous release, in this release we got the UI, so we can finally use it not just through service calls, but also through the UI. One thing, unfortunately, I cannot show you. There is a new entity type, and this entity type is called valve. If you have a smart valve, for example, radiator valve, pool valve, irrigation valve, or whatever, it can be added now to Home Assistant. As far as I know, the only existing device currently supported in Home Assistant for this type is Shelly Gas Valve. If you have a gas sensor and if you have a valve that can automatically close the gas line if the gas leak is detected, you are okay and you should see a new entity type inside your Home Assistant. 
And now for some more UI changes. And I do predict that this year will be the year where we'll be seeing a lot of UI changes. By the way, a lot of you have been complaining that the UI has been lacking love. But if you take a closer look at all of the releases in the 2023, you will see that each release had a big or major update to some of the UI components. I hope and I believe that this will be the case also in 2024. So what's new with the thermostat and the humidifier card? A lot of people were complaining that they want to change what the focus value in the middle of the card is. Should it be the current temperature in the room or should this be the target temperature of this card? Now you have option. If you go to edit, if it's turned on, it will show you the current or primary temperature information. That's the temperature currently in the room. And if you untick it or disable it, you will see the target temperature for whatever device you are controlling with this thermostat card. The same will happen with the humidifier card. But not in my case, since my device has decided to detach from the BLE proxy and it's currently not pulling information here. When we are already talking about the UI changes, there is a new card feature. If you have a thermostat or climate card, you can now add fan controllable features or fan modes. Unfortunately, I do not have any HVAC system that supports the fan modes, so I cannot show you. But it should look something similar to this, just you would be controlling the fan speeds, directions or whatever. But this also brings us the new update card feature. Update card feature allows you to display and also be able to use updates inside the UI. If you've seen my latest video that was released actually just yesterday on the 31st of December, this is how my update card looks. It shows you if there is update to add-on, it shows you if there is an update to the supervisor or the OS, but you cannot do anything here. In the new release of Home Assistant, we have option to add those features. If we look under the hood, press on three dots, edit, edit, we can see that these are the tile cards and in the feature section, I've just enabled actions here. Also, depending on what type of update you are doing. For example, OS doesn't have it, supervisor doesn't have it, but core does have it. So let's go to three features. You can edit and select if you want to be asked about the backup, if you want to do the backup, or if you want to ignore the backup. And this allows you to semi-automate the task of updating, not just the main components, in this case, operating system, supervisor, or core. But also, you can do that to the add-ons. We see that I only have one update, and that is the January release of Zigbee to MQTT. If I would now click Install here, the system would ask me if I want to create a backup, and it will continue by creating the backup and updating the system. For the Zigbee to MQTT, same thing, pressing the Install, would ask me if I want to do a backup, but it cannot do the backup because my main setup is already doing the backup. Or if I would select no, that I don't want any backups for Zigbee to MQTT, and there is actually a reason for this system why I don't want to do that, and I would click on install, it would automatically start download and installation of the latest version of Zigbee to MQTT without backup. But let's also look at some other noteworthy information. For example, support for Shelly Gen 3 devices. I think that this is a Shelly Mini, the latest Mini relay. Pink has been moved to the UI a couple of releases ago. And this release brings us again option to customize the interval of the pink. Preset modes have been added to ESP Home. Calendar entity was added to the radar. France was added to the picnic countries list and some others. There are also some new integrations. From the list of the integrations, unless you're using specific device, I would recommend that you look at the holiday. This adds a holiday calendar to your home assistant that can then be used once again inside your automations. Also, a lot of new virtual integrations. Most of them are tied to OPower that allow you to pull the specific information for your power distributor if you are living in the States. Netgear, Streamlabs, Suez Water, Swiss Public Transport, System Monitor and Trend have been moved to the UI and the configuration can now be removed from the YAML file, of course, if you have restarted your system and the configuration was already imported. Check your repairs and fixes section in Home Assistant. And there are some backward incompatible changes. One of them is Home Assistant shutdown event. If you previously used this one, you know that sometimes this was not triggered, as it may have happened that the system was going in a shutdown, 
it triggered this service call, but it failed to do whatever this service call was expected to do. We also had changes to Modbus, Prusa Link, Real Link and Shelly. For Real Link, actually, this is not a big change. In the settings, you have option to enable or disable infrared lights. This is not actually a light that is on or off. This is a switch to enable light to go on or off. So actually, it was not a light, as previously shown in Home Assistant. It was actually a switch enabling or disabling that part of functionality. This has been fixed. Also, Shelly. Well, the minimum supported level for Shelly Generation 1 devices is currently 1.11.0, and that is the firmware from the 2021. If you haven't already updated your devices, Shelly devices, to the latest firmware, you should do so. And this is it. My recording setup has finished doing update to the Zigbee to MQTT, has finished doing the backup, and now is installing the latest beta version of Home Assistant. But good luck with that, because the video is done. And this is it for this latest video on what's new in Home Assistant 2024.1. It will take some time for me to get used to say 2024 instead of 2023. I hope you all had a wonderful, peaceful, enjoyable and fun new year. In your opinion, what was the biggest change in this release of Home Assistant? It at first looks like there is not a lot happening, but actually there is a lot of things happening under the hood. What do you think the year off will be this year for Home Assistant? Will it be continuation of the year of the voice? Will it be something else? I would like to hear your opinion or comment. And do you think that there is a functionality that Home Assistant is currently missing? Except, of course, the one that I mentioned in my last video when I talk about the wishes for the next year or this year for Home Assistant and Smart Homes. The next thing I'm looking forward to is the year of the... Let's leave this line blank for Home Assistant. I bet that the next year will bring us a lot of changes to the UI. But remember people, smart home shouldn't even need UI. What I'm expecting to see in year 2024 or year 2025 from Home Assistant is that it finally becomes smart home. And what I mean by that? For example, today we add devices Home Assistant. And that's everything we should really need to do in a smart home. We shouldn't need to create automations. Let's look at this case for example. If, by some miracle, Home Assistant manages to implement something like OpenAI but locally and gets brain, what the process of onboarding should look like. You add door window sensor, name that sensor front door. The Home Assistant then asks you, oh, I see that you have a new sensor called front door. Do you want me to create some out-of-box automations for it? For example, you get notified if the front door is left open, if somebody is opening the door and there is nobody at home, etc. And you say yes, and Home Assistant creates automations for you. This is what a smart home should look like. If you did like this video, don't forget to give it a like. Also, if you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And before I wrap up the video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that have been supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed, commented or shared my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, well, just check out the links in the description of the video. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.